Before we have our second. Welcome for the Benzinga Pro from Cybertrain University. We are going to talk a little bit about the Benzinga. I'm so excited about this event. We got two really great guests that are going to come on. We haven't had Benzinga on in a while, but uh, you know that we use Benzinga a lot in our cyber group trading room. One of the very important tools that we use to kind of find the news, certain things, and specifically when it comes to day trading. You know, when it comes to even swing trading or an options trading, you know, it's always like a good idea to kind of know what exactly is going on. With earnings and everything else, that's especially going on with this week, Biz, bi biggest earnings week of the quarter is this week. You got the fabulous seven of the five that are going to be reporting on Thursday, and we're going to use it, and it's going to help us out a lot. So uh, let me just do a quick little intro, in, intro right here. We got James and Ryan. James, really, just really quick, uh, James Sagantigo, basic Italian boy just like myself. Looks like they're both Italians, too. <laughs> what we talking yeah. about the last... Always know from the last vowel, uh, last letter of uh, the vowel. But uh, James has been a trader for for Benzinga Pro for about five years ago, and a deep passion to the market. He under understands the underlying fundamentals. Primary focus is on swing trading, which we do a lot about over here at Cyber Trade University. He does talk a lot about more technical setup, strong fundamentals, and much much more. Um, over the years, James has helped thousands of useful ident to identify their strategies to best suit their needs and indeeds. And Ryan's going to join him with him. He's also a very self-taught trader, which is obviously a lot of us you know, do here. And then obviously we always learn. Good traders never stop learning. But um, he's been doing it for a while. Um, he's been on, he does a, runs a YouTube and online chat room. Does a lot of work with Benzinga. Also, uh, been been a customer for there since nineteen uh, two thousand fourteen. After being a subscriber after five years, he joined Benzinga in twenty nineteen and helped grow the ca capabilities of the Benzinga Pro. So they're going to go over all the features and some of the tools that we do. We'd like to enjoy and happy that he's here. And uh, like I said, this will be recorded, so you'll be able to watch it later. And uh, feel free to answer any questions. We'll probably go for about 50 minutes. And then at the end of the presentation, we're going to show you guys, give you guys all a promo if you want to get it, which I highly recommend. And there's not too many stuff that we, stuff, too many platforms we do recommend at Cybertrain University, but these are one of them that we use very often. So guys, without uh, taking too much time away from you, the stage is all yours. All right. Thank you, Fausto. Uh, I am Ryan. Thank you, by the way, Josh and Debbie for putting this together. We really appreciate being here. Uh, as you mentioned there in my intro, I'm self-taught and I started with this tool. Um, this was kind of like the genesis of me growing up, if you will, in the market. So uh, I really enjoy these presentations and I can't thank you for inviting us uh, to this presentation. I am here with my teammate, James Santangelo. Uh, I am not Italian. I'm actually Irish. So uh, there's a funny story about my last name. They moved the O from the front to the middle and added an A for America. And lo and behold, that's where we are. But I'm really excited to uh, go over Benzinga Pro here. James, are you around? I am here. I'm excited to get started. Yes, I am, in fact, full Italian. Um, as, as Fausto said, thank you very much for the warm intro. We're very happy to be here. Uh, my pr primary focus today is going to be keeping an eye on the chat. I want to make sure we catch all the questions and address every concern everybody has. Uh, so, Ryan, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I uh, listened to the first half of that presentation there, and I ran out of the ability to type all of the good things that I was hearing. So it, it first of all, right off the top here, it sounds like Josh and I are very much aligned on our trading style. Now, as far as Benzinga Pro goes, uh, there are a couple of things that you have to know. Uh, I know we, we just talked a little bit about day trading and swing trading. The first thing that I want to stress here is that Benzinga Pro and the tools contained within Benzinga Pro can help you do all of it. Um, sometimes that's not readily obvious from the outset, and I totally get it. Uh, the platform does a lot. It has a lot of features, and so some things might be a little bit more difficult to find. But I'm going to use the Pixelworks example that Josh just used from a live trade. Uh, we actually live traded this this morning. As Fausto mentioned, Benzinga does live trading on YouTube every morning, and this was one of the stocks uh, that we actually traded as a group there. So I want to walk through the entire process of how you can use this software to set up and prepare for those trades. Now, um, James said he's going to watch the chat here for questions. So if I move too quickly through this or if I skip over something, uh, James, maybe do your best to try and stop me. I, I want to be able to make sure that I'm clear on everything. Uh, so just kind of 
keep an eye on make sure make sure that Abs i don't go over anything absolutely and for everybody watching ryan is an unstoppable machine when it comes to pro so get ready i hope everybody's got their notepads out and uh, let's go ahead and get started Okay, so uh, Josh did a great job outlining how to trade uh, pixel works in terms of day trade support and resistance, all that fun stuff. I'm not going to spend time reteaching you the CTU curriculum. I'm going to let them do the great job that they do at that. But what I am going to do is help show you how you can fold pro into your daily routine. And that's actually one of the biggest benefits that Pro uh, provides you. This entire platform is customizable. So you're looking at a screen right now that I'm calling my main workspace. Uh, all of my workspaces are listed across the top here. I've got more than can be displayed. I can very easily access them by scrolling my mouse wheel. But this is really like the first key point of Benzinga Pro. You can set this platform up to help you achieve different tasks, whether that be day trading, whether that be reading news, whether that be having a scanner, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever it is that you need to do, Benzinga Pro is going to allow you to do that, and you're going to be able to kind of customize that to fit exactly how you trade. Uh, I've met a lot of traders that trade similarly. I just mentioned Josh said a lot of things that I think about on a daily basis. But nonetheless, I still haven't run into somebody or two traders that trade exactly the same. Same entries, same stock. It just doesn't happen. We're all a little bit different. And Benzinga Pro accounts for that to let you kind of uh, customize this. So um, we're looking at the main workspace. This is actually going to be the third workspace that we're going to stop at because this is the workspace that I use when the market opens. Now, what that means is that there's other work that I'm doing prior to the market opening. And that's kind of what I want to go over with here for you. So first of all, uh, when I sit down at my desk, one of the first things I do is I click over to a different workspace that I have created. In this particular workspace, it utilizes three instances of the same tool, the newsfeed. But these news feeds are set up a little bit differently, designed to provide different information for me to me throughout the course of the trading day. So I really quickly want to set the stage, and then I'll talk about how I use these. On the right-hand side of the platform here, on this bigger news feed, uh, you'll see that I actually have it filtered by two tickers in the uh, search bar here. OK, so I have the spy ticker or the USO. Now, for those of you that are into computers in any type of fashion, you probably recognize this. And the fact that it has a little drop down arrow means that you can change this operator for, from or to and or not. So right off the bat here, when you're using the search bar in the newsfeed, you have what we call Boolean control over your search terms. So you can search for different tickers as I've done here, or you can search for keywords. And moreover, you can actually build complex expressions based on what you're looking for. Uh, so really, really cool feature there. In fact, I'm not really sure of any other newsfeed out there that gives you that much control over the news. Nonetheless, let's focus on this particular newsfeed. It's filtered by two tickers here, SPY or USO. And the reason that I do this is because I need to know what the big market moving news is. And I need that every day, sometimes multiple times per day, and sometimes at varying times of the day. So um, what by filtering the newsfeed by ticker SPY, we are aggregating all of that news. Now, big news, what does that mean? Well, that means anything that could move the market as a whole, right? So if we get comments out of the Fed about interest rates or anything like that, that's likely to move the market. Those are going to be tagged under SPY. Comments from the president or out of the White House, as we're seeing here with this 1151 post on SPY regarding uh, Iran, th these are going to be important comments and they could move the entire market, not just one, two, or a handful of stocks. The other thing in here are going to be some of the data prints that we were waiting for this morning, the uh, CB Consumer Confidence print, as well as the jobs jolt opening. I know exactly where I can find these whenever I need that. And to me, that's value right there. Now, I need the news feed for more than that. So what I've chosen to do in this instant it, or in this instance, is actually add more news feeds. But these news feeds are configured differently, and they do different things. So if we uh, start on the bigger news feed here on the right, and we move just directly left in here, you'll see I have another news feed. This time, nothing in the search bar, but I've actually used a filter that's built into our sources and categories, and that's what I want to show you here. So if I click on the sources button, you're, it's actually going to bring up the sources menu here. And in 
or these sources are different sources of news. So we're actually going to talk about this here in a little bit. Um, Josh talked earlier about Pixelworks, and he actually showed the Benzinga Pro platform, and he showed one of the things that I'm going to show you here. But what he didn't show you are some of the other sources in here, and this is going to be important. I was extremely excited when he chose Pixelworks, and I'm extremely excited when he flipped over to the newsfeed because I am about to deepen your knowledge on how this newsfeed can work. Okay, so first of all, we've got the in, in the present configuration here, we have only Benzinga wire checked. More specifically, if we actually click on the word, you can see that the Benzinga Wire news source has a host of other categories that you can filter your news feed by. Now, if you take a look at this list, you're not going to see hardly any check marks because I've only got one checked. And this uh, category here at the bottom is WIM, W I I M. Now, what that means is why is it moving? So uh, these are list of reasons as determined by our team of news desk teammates. They, when they figure out why a stock is moving, they give you the reason. Well, this is great. Uh, so a lot of the times I can figure out why a stock is moving. If I have the squawk feature turned on, which I highly advise all of you try at some point if you haven't already, this is an audio feed that will read breaking news. Sometimes it'll read stock XYZ is popping on heavy volume here. Uh, and when I flip over to it, I see, oh, this is a sympathy of a company that just reported earnings. They're trading up in sympathy with the, with that company. There's a number of ways that you can identify it. But what I like to do is I like to have our team help me out with that. So I actually filter this newsfeed to only have the whim category. Now, the result of this is I have now set up a newsfeed that has a chronological list of reasons why stocks are moving. This is extremely important because, first of all, in, in my example in the morning when I sit down in the pre-market, I sit down here and I say, okay, what happened before I sat down? What happened either yesterday after hours or this morning uh, while I was in the shower or getting ready for my day? What happened? And I come down here, I scroll to the beginning of the day, I take a look uh, into yesterday, and I say, okay, well, we've got a bunch of these companies that are reporting earnings, CISS uh, showed a 9.1 stake in the company, or there's a, a 13G showing a, a 9.1 stake in the company. Okay, great. And then we have earnings here from this morning. So really quickly, in a matter of minutes, I can figure out what's going on, what I missed, and kind of be prepared for the day already. Now, some of you out there, some of you day traders might be realizing, well, gosh, if you're showing us a piece of news that is explaining why a stock is moving, doesn't that imply that the stock is already moving? And the answer is yes. So I don't use this as necessarily an alert for a new trade. Instead, I, I use this for plugging the gaps, right? Filling in the holes in uh, with information so that I can make better decisions going forward. Maybe one of these catalysts is so great that I think to myself, hey, uh, this actually might keep going. And then I'll dive into the actual chart. We'll find different key levels, resistance support, uh, different key levels as outlined by different moving averages, VWAP, whatever it is that you use, you can do all of that and kind of set up a trade. I am of the belief, very, very simple belief here that more information, more better. More information, more better, and hopefully on the other side of that, more profit. So I always want to have as much information here as possible. Now, the last news feed that I have down here, the one that's highlighted all in red, I use a very similar function. I use the sources function uh, to, uh, excuse me, the sources and the category function to filter for things that are very, very specific. In the example of this particular news feed, I'm scanning for things that are hot, uh, exclusive or a market moving exclusive. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because if we do something as an exclusive to Benzinga, I know right off the bat that I or our community is going to be the first to be able to react to that. So in some cases here, we'll say, you know, we have an interview coming up on Benzinga's YouTube with the CEO of ticker XYZ. Hey, maybe there will be news there. Maybe I should prepare for that. Uh, and so I use this newsfeed just to kind of stay on top of all of those things. 
Key takeaway from this is that I set this up for things that I need. The newsfeed is going to allow you to set this up for anything that you need. And in fact, just to demonstrate that a little bit more here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new newsfeed with no filters applied just to kind of show you some of the other things that you can do with this. Now, let's talk about the pixel work example that Josh mentioned at the beginning here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do exactly what he did, and I'm going to filter my newsfeed for pixel works. So the first thing that you're going to see here is here is that news post that he read to you. Pixel work shares are trading higher after the company entered into a multi-year agreement with Walt Disney Studios. I don't really think I need to elaborate on this at all. Pixel works is a very, very small company. By the way, if you mouse over the ticker anywhere in the platform, it will show you the price, the change, the change percent, and also give you a spark line chart. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's doing. Um, we don't really need to talk about what this means for this company. I mean, Disney is a huge company. It's been around for a long time. This is obviously a positive. But one of the things you might be noticing here is, well, this is that whim category, right? If I click on any content within the Benzinga newsfeed, it will expand the content. Now, in here, all we have is a headline because remember, a whim is a one or two sentence synopsis on why a stock is moving. And you can see it's tagged with the category tag here, whim. So you can confirm that this is a whim. But there's another piece of news here. And you might be looking at that timestamp and saying, well, 918, well, you know, this started to move a little bit earlier. Um, this news looks a little late. And if you had said that, uh, I totally understand where you're coming from, but that's not actually what's going on here. Again, we're going to talk about what, Zynga, what Benzinga Pro can do for you. Let's go back to the sources menu. If I click on sources, we obviously have the Benzinga wire checked by default. That's how any new news feed is loaded. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check press releases. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know what press releases are. Uh, companies, when they report earnings, they disseminate new information to the public, a lot of times via a press release. So we want to be able to capture those. Now, the cool part about press releases, I'm just going to go ahead and check the box here. It's going to add all of these different press release companies uh, to the newsfeed. And then I'm going to press done. Now you can see that I've actually added more content to the newsfeed because I've added another source of information. Look at the purple highlighted line at the beginning of today. 8 a.m. on the dot, 8 a.m. colon zero zero colon zero zero. This literally came right when it was released. Walt Disney Studios and Pixelworks enters into a first of its kind multi-year agreement to expand the reach of true cut motion technology. This is the press release that caused this stock to pop this morning. If you wanna read the entire press release, all you have to do is click on that content and it will show you the exact press release that these other press release companies get. So again, I just kind of wanted to, to show you the difference here uh, uh, between a whim and some of the other sources and how all of this functionality is built into your platform. Uh, again, when there is more content, like is the case in a press release, you'll be able to access that exact content. In the case of a whim, when it's just a headline, there's only that headline. So right away there, you can, you can already see how you can set these news feeds up to show you more information. OK, so uh, before we move away from the news feed, I also want to show you some other things that you can do. We've talked about filtering the news feed by tickers. We've talked about filtering the news feed by keywords. Uh, some sample keywords for this would be something like primary endpoint or uh, FDA news that that it had where something is accepted or, or, or something like that, or a phase two trial, or positive clinical data. Any of these keywords that you recognize moves the underlying asset, you can then filter your newsfeed to find that. So um, I think Josh said earlier, trading is one of those jobs where you never stop learning. Fausto, maybe that was you. I apologize if I'm misciting that. I could not agree with that more. Trading is a, a process of lifelong learning. I'm someone that came from two teachers as parents, and they instilled to me at a young age, no matter what you do, always keep learning. And I'm very, very glad that they did because trading is a great example of that. You absolutely need to keep adding information to your toolbox. Benzinga Pro can help you make sense of some of those things. Or really quickly, some other ways that you can filter the newsfeed. We talked again, we talked about tickers, we talked about keywords, we talked a little bit about sources. Uh, there are some other ways that you can actually filter this as well. Uh, and I apologize, my uh, computer lags a little bit here when I'm screen sharing. So again, I apologize for some of the little bit of lag here. 
Um, one of the other things that you can do is you can filter your news feed by what we call a scanner. And these are basically any of the filters that are in the scanner tool. So for example, if you only want to have a news feed set up for stocks that have a price between zero and $20, we can very easily do that. We can add price as a filter to the newsfeed tool, and then we can select under 20 as the uh, filter that we want to apply there. If you have a custom value, oops, sorry about that. If you have a custom value that doesn't appear in the list, simply select custom and then input your own data. Now, when I press done, I'm only receiving news about stocks that have a price under $20. You can also jump to historical dates. If you have a watch list of stocks that you uh, trade on a regular basis, you can filter your newsfeed to only show you news about the watch list. So again, I, I'm, I'm gonna drill it home in pretty much any presentation that I do. Customization, the ability to kind of mold the tool into what you want, huge, huge benefit here for Benzinga Pro. Okay. Really, really good Go stuff. Uh, Ryan, real quick. So Linda, Linda has a question. Tesla's hitting new lows. Um, let's pull up Tesla. Let's see if we have any news out on that, maybe even a whims. Yep, sure. So um, here's another, this is a great question, Linda. Appreciate it. And thank you, James, for staying on top of me here. Um, the first thing that I need to do here, though, is I actually need to clear off that price because Tesla is over $20. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to go ahead and search for Tesla. Here is your news for Tesla. Now, remember, uh, we did turn press releases on as well. Um, so I don't really see any new fresh news up here. Uh, there's this market clubhouse memo, most important earnings reports. This looks like kind of like an earnings preview news post. I don't necessarily see any fresh news here that's causing Tesla to move lower. So what I will assume then in the absence of any other information is that Tesla is obeying some type of technical level. Now, if I take a look at the Tesla chart here, uh, sorry, I don't have that ready here. It's going to take me a sec to flip over there. Um, if I take a look at the Tesla chart here, I can see that this the most recent red candle on the way down uh, actually broke today's lows. So to me, this absolutely seems like a low of day break on Tesla. And I, again, I'm really sorry about the platform lagging here. Uh, it happens when I present. Let me go ahead and, and look at a, a one minute chart here. So here's what I'm seeing. So I didn't see any fresh news there, Linda. I take a look at the intraday chart here and I look at the intraday low and look what happened. As soon as that snapped, this really kind of uh, sped up a little bit on the sell-off. I can actually see that the volume expanded to the downside here as that move was being made, but I don't see any news. So I'm actually not surprised to see it bouncing a little bit here. Okay. Um, so Michael's saying, look at eight o'clock in the morning here on Tesla. Um, well, so that is in here. Let's see if I can actually find that here. Here it is. Um, this is the post that uh, Michael is referring to. This is eight o'clock on the dot, 11 seconds past eight. The Elon Musk of Vietnam just made four billion on a move to take on Tesla and a 1,414.7% stock surge. I don't think that this is what's causing Tesla to move. But again, what I said at the outset of this, more information, more better, right? You want to have as much information uh, to make your trading decisions as possible. But just for the sake of the example here, because of Linda's question, looking at this, I think that this just kind of accelerated as Tesla tested the intraday low. As it moved closer to that intraday low, we started to get some expanding selling. Once we broke that, those sellers became exhausted. The stock is bouncing. Uh, we will see um, if this bounce continues or if we get another leg down uh, from this broken area here. But this, this would be my best guess, just kind of doing this on the fly. OK, um, let me get back to the actual example of how the morning unfolds here. We talked a little bit about using the news feed uh, workspace that I have where I have multiple news feeds set up. I showed you how you can filter that news feed to really kind of go after what you want. I showed you how you can add other sources of news. We used press release as an example, but we have other sources in there like partner links, which would include news from things like Seeking Alpha, Guru Focus, TechCrunch, et cetera. So there's a lot of different sources that you can kind of figure out. And I, I might as well use this time to explain that the Benzinga wire source itself that is considered our aggregated news source. So what that means is that if there's a piece of news that comes out uh, via the Dow Jones Newswire or via Reuters or via Bloomberg, that is going to be aggregated in our Benzingo Wire news source. That's what our team of news desk teammates are doing 
all day, every day. They're aggregating news, whether it's exclusive to us or exclusive to somebody else. They're trying to get you that news as soon as possible. In some cases, it can be done automatically via an API. In other cases, we need smart humans to be able to go out and find that, practiced humans to go out and find that. So that's kind of where we're at there. Excellent um, Go ahead, James. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, uh, try to, trying to set you up with a bit of a segue here. One of the things that uh, I really like to use Pro for, and to the point of Tesla, is having presets. And, and I'll make a point. Let's say you're trading tech or EVs, and you have your whole watch list set up with all of your alerts and everything set up, and you notice rotation maybe coming out of tech into, let's say, commodities. right? So normally, you'd have to scramble to set up a watch list, get your alerts set up, get your levels set up, everything like that. With Pro, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because Ryan has probably 100, 110 uh, presets. You can just pull up that preset and you're good to go. Ryan, do you want to get into a bit of your own presets and how you uh, navigate the market? Yeah, I mean, I, I do want to show the movers tool here, but just because of the example here, one of the things that James is talking about, you're going to have different presets for different tools. So for example, I have the scanner tool and I'm going to show you uh, how to actually create different scans, save different scans and access different scans in one second here. But one of the other things that James is mentioning here are going to be watch lists, right? Don't forget, watch lists don't just serve as a list of uh, stocks that you enter that are, are moving or or whatever. Um, it's not just a watch list like it might be in some of your other more traditional software or like your broker. Like for example, my Thinkorswim has a watch list feature. I've, I of course use it, but it's just a watch list. The cool thing about Benzinga Pro is that anything that you make into a watch list can then be used as a filter. So to James's comment here about presets, you can actually set up a news feed to only show you stocks about certain buckets. So uh, for example, if I expand my drop down menu here for my watch list tool, this is what James was talking about. You can see how many different watch lists I have here. Um, it's just it's just a ton. And, and I do these, you know, if, if something is happening, I'll create a different watch list and I'll add different tickers to it. And it makes it really helpful for me to review the news, review the change, or simply filter a scanner by that. So uh, absolutely, you can do this. Uh, as far as I know, there's no limit to how many different watch lists that you can have. And again, remember, those actually turn into an active filter that you can use. Moreover, you can actually link your uh, broker to Benzinga Pro. Now, I will say here, be I, I hesitate to use the word link because one of the questions I always get is, can you trade from Benzinga Pro? The answer is no. Uh, frankly, uh, there was a great question earlier about direct access trading. Frankly, I would always want to trade from the broker, right? I want as little intermediary steps between me and the market maker as possible. So even if that functionality did exist, I'm not even sure I would take advantage of that. I want to enter trades directly from my broker. I don't want to go through a third party. Now, with that being said, there is never never a day where I don't keep Benzinga Pro open on some type of screen because I use this as a supplementary tool. So if I'm filtering a news feed by a watch list, or if I'm filtering a scanner by a watch list, all, I don't have to click on anything. I can literally just glance at a dedicated area on my desktop, and I know I'm going to be able to find that information. Okay, so uh, this is a good example, James. Let me keep on going with the example that I had lined up here for the movers tool. Uh, we talked a little bit about reviewing the news feeds first, figuring out what took place um, when you weren't there or the night before. And uh, then we talked about reviewing the whims, seeing what's moving. Now it's time to actually see what's moving. So again, we're still in the pre-market here in my average day. Uh, the market hasn't opened. So what I'm using is I'm using the movers tool. Now, this is one of the most popular tools in Benzinga Pro. And the reason that it is, is because it is extremely easy to use. It requires almost no setup. Uh, once you kind of figure out what you're looking for here, it's just a couple of clicks of a mouse and it prevent or provides you the information that you're looking for. So again, going back to my daily routine here, the next thing that I want to do is I want to figure out what are the gappers going to be today, whether they're gapping up or gapping down. And the movers tool is the perfect tool to very quickly help me get that information. Now, one of the other things that you're looking at on the screen here is I have a details tool open with it. This is a repeat of what you saw on my main workspace when we started the presentation. Again, you can open multiple instances of these tools, you can create multiple configurations, and you can use them for different tasks. What I'm talking about here is identifying 
pre-market gappers. So what am I going to do? In the movers tool, in the filters that I have here at the top, I'm going to select gainers. I'm on the long bias guy. I'm always looking for stuff that's moving up or, or trading up. Um, not much of a shorter, um, but that doesn't matter for Benzinga Pro. We'll get into that here in a sec. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scan the pre-market session, right? Because I want to figure out what's going to gap. So I want to know what's moving in the pre-market. Those stocks that are moving are going to be our gappers. The next thing that I'm going to do here for period, I'm going to make sure that I have session selected because what this is going to do is scan the entire session. If I had 30 minutes selected here, this would only scan the last 30 minutes of the pre-market session. Uh, and you'll notice that when I clicked on 30 minutes here, my entire list changed. Not only did the tickers in the list change, but so too did these change percent values. The reason that that is the case is because this tool is reporting you the information based on the filters that you have selected. So in this case, I'm saying, hey, what's trading up, what's gaining in the pre-market over the last 30 minutes? Well, the answer here is FGen was your biggest gainer over the last 30 minutes of the pre-market. It was up 12.34% in that time. Now, again, going back to the example here, what I like to do is I like to have this on session because I want to scan for all of the things that are moving around in the pre-market. I want to have that list here. Now, what I have is a descending order list from the highest percent change. Look at what stock happens to reside at the top of our list. It's our good old friend Pixelworks that uh, we have been trading on the live program as well as on this webinar when uh, when Josh took one. Okay, so here's Pixelworks. You can see that it's trading up here in the pre-market. I don't have the uh, session uh, shading on here. This is actually something that I'm kind of working through uh, with developers at the moment, but traditionally there will be shading here to make this a little bit easier to see. You can always tell, frankly, by the volume surge right around the open, but that's neither here nor there. You can see in the pre-market, we took one pop up. Then we kind of consolidated a little. Then we took the next leg up. When we took this leg up, we were rejected right at this 221, 222 price. We kind of came back in. We reclaimed that VWAP. And then as soon as the market opened, this thing ripped out of the gate. So uh, in the pre-market, if I rewind here, uh, hang on just one sec here. Uh, if I rewind here, this is effectively what we were looking at. Okay. I, I, don't have the regular session here. In fact, I should move back to the regular session. Let me get that nine. Got to get this time right there. There we go, right in here. So this is about what we had right as the market opened. Well, as that was happening, Pixelworks traded up on what I call expanding volume, which is a key thing that I'm looking for for my day trading setups. And we took this VWAP. Okay, we were rejected there the first time. When we when we sold back off, we held the low that we just put in, and then we reclaimed this VWAP. And look at the volume sticks that we did this on. These were the biggest volume sticks of the day. For a day trade, this is where I want to be. I want to be with the rest of the volume for several reasons. One, I want to be able to make sure I can actually get my order, right? I want to get filled on my entry and I want to get filled on my exit. And if there's a lot of volume, the stock's liquid, it's much easier for me to do that. So we have the stock trading up. We have the volume expanding uh, significantly. We move through this key level and the thing pushes up to 240, starts to get a little heavy there, has a little bit of back and forth action and then actually sells off. Uh, my out, I sold into the up move. When I'm doing a day trade scalp, I don't necessarily care about top ticking it. I don't care about bottom ticking it. I don't care about top ticking it. I wanna capture the meat of the move. I'm often looking at volume to do that. When I get a pop through that level, if I have a level that I'm waiting for, great. I'll look for that. Uh, if I don't, I'll just sell into the strength. And I, I, Josh talked earlier about using some of your other tools like level two, time and sales. Uh, I use those all the time. He also mentioned book map, which is great for finding different levels. Um, but I use those all the time to figure out exactly uh, where I'm going to sell and all of that. Um, you can actually see that Pixelworks is setting up here again. Uh, after that initial impulse move, we have a corrective move back to the VWAP. We have a number of tests at this VWAP line where Pixelworks holds in there. And then guess what? It starts to move again. We get a little bit of that expanding volume again. We get another push to the highs. We actually created a double top here at 244. That rejected this, and now it really kind of sold off. It actually came back to balance here, held above the V 
VWAP and then knifed. And after this knife, it again, it, it kind of discovered the area lower that it's going to hold at. Now it's made a move back to VWAP. Now I can see intraday here, we've actually made three attempts at the VWAP. Technically, we've gone above it, but we really haven't broken out uh, from that. So, uh, and, and I think Personally, the reason that we haven't is because the volume did not allow us to do that. The volume was not expanding down here the way it was at the open. This gives us different conditions for this trade. So um, right away, I could tell in the pre-market before the market even opened, this is a stock that has a PR. By the way, that win that we were talking about, that reason why the stock is moving, look what's printed at the top of the details tool for you here. When a stock has an active whim on it, if you focus that stock in any details tool within your platform, it will automatically display that for you. This blue block, blue box here says Pixel Work shares are trading higher after the company entered into a multi-year agreement with Walt Disney Studios. That's the news that we read to you earlier. So even if you're coming to some of these things late, if we figured out why it's moving, we're going to tell you why it's moving. We're trying to make the due diligence and research process take less time. If you are well-informed, hopefully you can focus on your execution and your trading. Better execution should lead to more profits. Exactly. Right? And that's that. That's really our, our main motto is news before it moves or as it's moving. Um, so I, just two things really quickly from Lee and Alan. Uh, typically, we use the chat uh, window in our standard Benzinga Pro webinar. I do see your two questions here in the Q&A section. So just very quickly, what is the difference between the news on the free portion of Benzinga and the news feed? And the second one, Alan, which is a great question, can you set triggers for watch list and example volume and price changes? Uh, Ryan's going to get into that. But yes, so much more than that, too. Custom keyword alerts as well if you're trading tech and you want to know anytime the word AI, or if you're trading biotech, you want to know when the, the, the word phase uh, is, is in the headline, you can set alerts for that as well. Okay. Um, James, remind me of that first question again. What is the difference between the newsfeed and the paid version and the free version? Did I get, yes, did I exactly. get that right? Okay, great. So let me go back to that newsfeed workspace that we just created. The free version of the newsfeed gives you the unfiltered newsfeed. Um, you'll get most, you'll get, I think you probably get all of the news. You can't really adjust any of the sources. You can't use any of the scanner variables. You basically can't use any of the filtering abilities that makes the news feed as valuable as it is, but you can still get the news. Okay. So I, I would say that if, when it comes to the news feed, the one on the free version is probably very much akin to the news feed in your broker. However, the version of the newsfeed on the paid version is that on steroids and HGH. It literally will allow you to do anything uh, that you can do, including jump to previous dates. Let me know if that answers your question. Now, that second question there, James, can you give that one to me again? Yes, absolutely. Give me just a moment here. Can you set triggers for watch list in example volume and price changes? Okay, great question. No, that is not available yet. However, However, let me go back to uh, the movers workspace that we were just taking a look at. Um, you asked about price alerts and volume alerts. So first of all, right off the top, just to answer your question, there are no alert features built into the watch list tool. Currently, the alert features that exist in Benzinga Pro are tool dependent. So different tools have different alert capabilities. Now, it should be known here that one of the big things in our development pipeline for 2024 is going to be a complete revamp of the alert system to allow you to add more customized granular alerts. So your question about price change or excuse me, a price alert and a volume alert, those are definitely going to be available in the future. In fact, Price alerts are available right now, and I'm going to show you how to do that. The, the caveat here is that you do not access the price alert from the watch list. Instead, you access it from the details tool. So again, the tool that I have here on the right, I have Pixelworks in focus here. You'll notice in the upper right corner of the details tool, I have three blue buttons. First one here is alerts. This is the price alert that you are asking about. Okay, so if you wanna say, if we're looking at this chart here and you wanna say, okay, well, I don't wanna be faked out by Pixelworks's uh, pops back to the VWAP here. Instead, what I wanna know is, I wanna know when this trades a 
above the VWAP. So let's go ahead and add 221 here. And I want to know when the price is above or equal to it. And you know what? I'm actually going to do 222 because I want to ensure that we actually trade at a value above that VWAP. Then I'm going to go ahead and click add. That price alert you can see is now active here. I will get a pop-up in Benzinga Pro when that price alert is triggered. So uh, price alerts are available right now. They are not in the watch list. It's found on the details tool, but keep your eyes peeled because at some point this year, I don't have a timeline, otherwise I'd give it to you. At some point this year, we are looking to drastically expand the alert capabilities. Okay, did I get those two questions? Was that satisfactory? Yeah, that was right on the nose. That was right on the nose. Do you want to, uh, I don't know if we got into the calendar at all, but I know analyst ratings is a big one. Uh, we uh, we're definitely getting into the calendar. Josh set me up earlier, so we about to spike this ball right here. Real quickly, um, the well, I did just talk to you about the blue alert button. There's also two other blue buttons up here. One allows a quick add to a watch list. So if you're rolling through tickers off of the movers tool here, or if you combine the details tool with a scanner and you're clicking through some of those tickers and you see a new ticker that you want to add to the watch list, there's a shortcut right here. You don't actually have to open the watch list tool. Just click the button, add it to the watch list. And then if you want to take notes on these stocks, there's a notes feature here. Now, the notes feature is uh, underappreciated, in my opinion. Uh, for those of you that trade the same stock over and over again, I know in our live trading program, we have a couple of traders that trade Tesla every single day. So what they do is they actually use the notes feature as a makeshift trading journal. Uh, I traded Tesla on a VWAP breakout here today, looking for two points on a move towards the highs, didn't end up getting it, or wh whatever the case is, whatever notes that you put in your trading uh, journal, whether it's your entry, your exit, the performance of the stock, the conditions that you found yourself in for taking that trade, you can add all of that in the notes right here from the platform. So real cool stuff. Um, let's talk about that calendar real quick. Cause I was, I was so excited when he was talking about that, uh, earlier, um, the calendar tool. So, uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with calendars. Our calendar tool is actually multiple tools in it. Frankly, uh, we call it the calendar tool, but if you expand the drop down that you find right at the top of the tool, right under the search bar, you'll actually notice that there are 14 different calendars. All of them, of course, provide different information for you. Uh, and these uh, effectively serve as different tools. Now, here is what I loaded up earlier. Josh was talking about uh, an economics calendar. Here is a really good way where you can find out what are the economic prints that we're going to be dealing with here this week. So you can see that the first thing that I've done here is I've actually selected the date range, right? I have the date range for this week, 128 to 203. So I, this is listing all of the different economic events and not just the US ones. Notice that the top of the list here actually has some events from South Africa here. Oh, oh, looks like I finally crashed it here. I got too many windows open. Let me just go ahead and refresh this and dive right back in here. This should actually work a little bit better now that I've refreshed it. Um, you can actually, you can see here that we have more than just the United States in here. So we're going to give you economics for, for more than just this country. Of course, you can change the sort on these uh, columns any way that you want. You can look at all the different economic prints in here. And then also the other thing that you can do in addition to sorting is you can actually filter. Here's one of those examples examples I talked about at the beginning. The program or the software, the platform here allows you to do a lot of stuff, but some of that stuff isn't necessarily available. If you look at the screen, you might not see the filters button, but it's right here on the side. So if I go ahead and click filters and now I click country, now I can actually filter by a specific country. So if I wanted to see Italy, for example, I can just go ahead and type in Italy and it will filter that list to only show me the economic uh, prints for Italy. Now, this is just one of the calendars. Josh also mentioned that we have an earnings calendar in here. James, you mentioned a, um, uh, the analyst ratings calendar. So let's talk about that. Uh, what I did is I just flipped over to earnings here. Um, I actually have a filter on here. Yep, see how I had filters left over? I had surprise revenue because I was looking for earnings that beat by a specific surprise. And I was also filtering for important. So this just kind of piggybacks off of what I was just talking about, about how you can filter any of these different calendars. Well, so here you go. Now you're looking at all of the different earnings prints. And again, remember, I have this set for the 
this week. So there's a lot of stuff in there. If I want to change this to today, if I just click on the date and I click today, boom, here's all the earnings prints here for today. It will denote if it's before the market or after the market. I can again filter on here. If you're looking at this list and you're like, oh my God, there are so many stocks reporting here. This is too much for me to go through. I don't care about a lot of these stocks. Some of them are probably pretty small. One of the other things that you can do, let's go to our filters menu. Let's expand market cap and let's go ahead and type in uh, maybe 5B isn't good enough. Let's go ahead and type in 50B. Of course, the platform is smart enough to know what you mean when you type B. I don't have to sit here typing a bunch of zeros. I can just denote 50 billion as 50B. And now look at my filtered list. Much easier for me to go through. I can just start with some of the bigger names. I can take a look at what the EPS is, what the estimated EPS is. Uh, I can actually, again, I can uh, mouse over the ticker. Uh, any place in the software that you see a colored ticker uh, really quickly. If it's green, that means it's up from the previous close. If it's red, that means it's down from the previous close. But if you mouse over it, you get some information. And likewise, if you click on it, it actually opens a details tool if you don't already have one and presents you the overview chart. If you do already have one, it knows what you're trying to do, and it simply changes the focus to the new stock that you're looking at. Uh, let me go ahead and close this real quick. I do want to show you the analyst ratings calendar. Here's another one. Um, analyst ratings, we talked a little bit about uh, how the platform can do all types of things. It can do things to help you day trade. It can do things to help you uh, swing trade or invest. Here is a perfect example for swing trade. How many of you have tried to tr uh, open up a swing trade based on an analyst recommendation? Let me get a one in the chat. If you have followed some analyst call into a stock. Okay, not a whole lot of swing traders here. Not a whole lot of swing traders here. Maybe we are actually mostly day traders, which is totally fine. Um, so the point that I was trying to make here with the analyst ratings is that, you know, there's a lot of information in here. And you might think to yourself with, well, I there's no way I can possibly, you know, take a look at all of these analysts. Well, maybe you'll start off with a firm that you like filter for the firm, or a particular analyst that you saw on TV, filter for the analyst. Maybe you only want to find stocks that are upgrades and have a positive rating, like buy or outperform. Well, you can do that too. All of that stuff here is going to be available in the filters menu. So remember, when you load in a tool in its default state, as we've done here with the calendar, there might be a lot of information in there. Just remember, there are definitely tools and settings that can help you make more sense of that. The big premise here that I'm going to hammer home, Benzinga Pro allows you to filter and mold this to whatever it is that you're looking for. I, too, have uh, followed plenty of downtown Josh Brown calls. And let me tell you, that dude in real life, that dude is fun to be around. If you ever get the chance to hang around Josh Brown, I highly advise that you do it. He's a great guy. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. Um, so that covers the calendar. Uh, I can't go over all of the different uh, calendars that we have in here. We've talked about analyst ratings, earnings, and economics. Of course, there's an FDA calendar in there. There's an IPO calendar in there. There's actually an unusual option activity calendar, which is really cool. This is our unusual option activity algorithm. And because it's in a calendar format, you can filter it. So for example, if you only want to see unusual option activity that are calls or puts, this is exactly how you would accomplish that. You would literally just come into the calendar and filter it as you as you see fit. So, okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about the calendar tool. I, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. I know we're running out of time here. I really did want to show you one more thing, and this absolutely pertains to day trading. So uh, remember here, now that, I, now that I've done a, a refresh here, I actually have a little bit faster platform. Let me just kind of review real quick. I start off by giving myself uh, an idea of what took place while you weren't here, uh, what took place in the morning. Uh, go over the news, kind of get myself up to speed. Okay, once we've done that, which we can do very, very quickly, now it's time to find the stocks that are gapping. So I'm going to click on my movers workspace. We're going to start with the stocks that are gapping up. If I want to see the stocks that are gapping down, I can just hit losers. Here is a, here's a really interesting one. This was actually a day trade yesterday. Here's an example of ONMD. Uh, this stock was down here in the pre-market. And look at the huge move on expanding volume that I just talked about. Look at the move that this stock made. It doesn't matter that the stock was down on the day. It still gave us a tradable setup here. 
Um, so again, if you want to just prepare yourself, things that are going up, things that are going down. In this case, I've applied some filters in here. I applied a minimum volume filter of 600K. I heard Josh talking about Fausto uh, doing this, making sure that the plays that you have in the morning all have enough volume. That is exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm saying if this stock hasn't traded 600,000 shares in the pre-market, it might be up for any number of reasons. It does not fit my criteria for a day trade. I absolutely need that liquidity in order to successfully day trade. So one of the things I do is I apply that filter. The other thing that I've noticed is that for stocks that are under $1, for whatever reason, I cannot seem to trade those very well. Um, call it what you want. Pump and dump, uh, chat room running it, whatever whatever you think it is, is, is fine. So what I do is I say, you know what? Don't even show me those penny stocks. Just show me the stocks that are above a dollar. By the way, ONMD here popping back to the VWAP. Let's see how it... Uh, performs after it looks like it's breaking through so we'll see oh so okay this is the mover scanner once the market actually opens now it's showtime so now i click over to my main workspace again this workspace is designed to find me day trading opportunities every single day pixel works although it was on our um pre-market list of gappers that we identified with the movers tool and we identified the news catalyst as soon as the market opened guess what stock showed up on the relative volume scanner you guessed it pixel works because the volume was so huge it carried into the regular session so what i have here real quick and i know i'm running out of time here um what i have here is i have a scanner uh i have a, a details tool I have an unusual option activity calendar, and I have two signals tools. The first signal tool reports anytime a stock is halted or resumed. We saw a number of uh, halts in some of the stocks this morning. Any of you Nexi traders out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then the other um, signals tool that I have here is reporting new session highs and new session lows and counting them. This is an old school measure of momentum that I got from a private equity veteran who used Goldman Sachs products since the 80s said, you know, anytime a stock is printing hundreds of new highs per day, the, you can be sure the momentum is behind that one. So uh, I, I incorporate that into my scan as well. But the crux of this scan is going to be the relative volume scanner. Now, in this case, I'm sure some of you have heard of relative volume before. The thing about this one is that we actually have an intraday relative volume filter. We have a daily one, of course, if you're doing nightly scans and you want to see what traded up on relative volume today and produce a list of potential targets for tomorrow, of course you can do that. But the other thing that we have here is this relative volume scanner. And this to me is is the bread and butter of what I'm trying to do here. Arval 5M30D, this means that it is looking at the relative volume of the given five minute window. So it doesn't matter if I look at this at 10 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 in the morning or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, it's always looking at the rolling five minute window and it's comparing that volume to the 30 day average of the same window. So I'm comparing apples to apples. If we take a look at the pixel works chart here, I don't want to compare the volume right now to the volume in the morning. It's exponentially different. I want to be able to compare the average volume now to other timeframes that have similar average volume. And that's exactly what this filter does. The other thing that I do here, I have the same volume liquidity filter to make sure I'm not trading something that's too thin or is not trading enough. And then again, going back to what I told you earlier, I'm a long bias trader. I'm looking for day trades to the long side predominantly. So what I have here is a change percent over the last minute. I have a two tenths filter added on there. That means that a stock that's down on the day, like we just saw with ONMD, if I had this as a change filter, it would not even show that to me. But instead, I want to know when that starts to curl up, when the volume starts to flow in and we start to move off of a, a level off the bottom, whether it's a support level or otherwise, I want to be alerted to that. I want to be able to potentially trade that. And that is exactly what I've built this scanner to do. The other cool thing about the details tool, in addition to it showing you the different charts that you click through here, it has acts, it has information for a lot of the other tools that we just took a look at. Okay, so let me get off uh, GMBL here. Let me actually see if there's a little bit bigger of a stock here. We're seeing kind of a lot of penny stocks in here. Ah, here, ATGE. This actually had a new short report and they bring in the woman on CNBC here to talk about it. Here's a great example, okay? 
we're looking at the chart here. I've got uh, the news desk is telling me exactly why it's moving. Ad telling glo uh, global education shares are trading lower following a report suggesting Fami Quadir, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, has taken a short position on the stock. Oh, also, by the way, it's got a, uh, earnings in two days after the market open or after the market closes, February 1st, and has the conference call that day. So right away, I'm kind of preparing myself for what's going on here. But the other thing is, what if I click on the calendar tab here in details? Okay, it doesn't pay a dividend. It's got no results for the dividend calendar. How about if it, if guidance? Oh, look, here are all of the different guidance, including the historical guidance figures that we had. Same deal for earnings. Same deal for analyst ratings. So all of the stuff that you can do in the platform, there's likely ways that you can access the same information. Do you want to take a look at the financials? We've got that right here. You want to export that because you're an Excel wizard and you want to build some crazy pivot table? Go ahead, export the table. You can do that. No problem at all. Uh, you want to know what the short interest is on this stock, considering we're talking about a new short report on this stock? Well, there's a tab for that too. And furthermore, we actually don't estimate the short interest. We tell you what they are from the filing. So this is the legit short interest information. Okay. I might've gone too long. I'm sorry about that. Someone reel me back in. No, you're, you're totally fine, Ryan. We are four minutes out from one o'clock. So definitely, definitely uh, uh, squeezing it on the time. I know Fausto, I believe Fausto has a link for you guys to sign up with pro. If you'd like what you've seen today, there is one question from William I'd like to address because it's very relatable to me. Can a bonehead learn how to use this? It's a bit overwhelming. And coming from a, a fellow bonehead, yes, absolutely. When I first started using Pro, it was overwhelming. And to that, we have several different chat rooms. We have live support sessions every single Friday that are designed to help you learn and understand how to use Pro. So yes, William, dive in. We'll help you get started. Let me let me actually show you one more thing here to address William's question. William, first of all, that's a great question. And I would encourage you to not be thrown off by that. Anything worth or anything good is, you know, worth doing, and it might be a little bit more difficult to actually get there. There is a lot of information in here. So two key points. Number one, first of all, you don't have to use everything in order for this to be successful for you. We have plenty of people that just use a handful of the tools, maybe a scanner, a details, and the squawk. But it makes them enough money to say, you know what, I don't even need the other stuff in the platform. So you don't have, number one, you don't have to use everything. Uh, in order for this to be valuable. As long as it's helping you make better trades, then we're doing our job. But secondly, okay, we actually have the web, the welcome page here. If I click on the welcome page and then I click on for in the four more information, we have walkthrough sessions that are Zoom calls that we do on Friday, but we also have this pro course. Now this pro course is hosted on a different website called Thinkific. This is absolutely free. This is a video-based course that breaks the platform down into different chapters. The chapters are arranged by the different tools that you have access to. It will walk you through the basics, the fundamentals of how to use those tools. It is available 24-7. It costs nothing to sign up. It costs nothing to create an account. You can literally use this as a resource anytime you want. Can't sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning? Brush up on your Benzinga Pro skills. No problem at all. Furthermore, you can, of course, reach out to our team. Uh, we have a, That's one of the things that separates us from our competitors. We have a great team uh, of our great teammates here that can help you learn any part of this platform. So, uh, Will, um, William, I hope that you won't be scared off by this. Here's the other thing that I'll say. We also offer a trial. So go ahead and start the trial, kind of get your feet wet a little bit, and then make your decision. So, all right, anything else that we want to cover? How do I do on time? We are doing good on time. Fausto, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Let me tell you, you guys definitely killed it. Um, Ryan, I mean, you really know your stuff on this platform. That's why we wanted you guys to be here. You know, we uh, we promote the link of, and Benzinga all the time in our trading room. And you know, the thing is, is that, you know, there's just so many bells and whistles that are on the platform, depending on your swing trader or an investor, or even like what we do, more day trading. And what I one thing I really like about your features, you pointing out more towards the end, is where you're kind of showing how to kind of filter out like some of the, you know, volume, uh, dollar amounts, and not seeing more penny stocks and so mm -hmm. on. You know, some platforms don't really do that, and it's more about scanning it. But um, we're gonna post up the link, everyone, to get a nice demo of that platform. Does anyone have the link? I don't know if uh, you know, who's there. Oh, there we go. Okay. So there's the link if everybody wants to get the Benzinga Pro and there's a promo uh, deal for that. And listen, you know, we could only show you so much. Um, you know, one of the things, big things that we do here at Cyber University is that like, you know, we tell you not to buy anything, you know, 
uh, with any brokerage firm or any platform like a Benzinga. Not that we don't want you to buy it because some people just don't know how to use it. And they'll buy it and just don't know how to use it. And they're like, well, you know, and then they get it. But once you start learning how to trade and you understand why you use one feature and, and, and this and that, and you'd be like, oh, now I know why you want this. Oh, now I know why you want that. Now you know why we want to bring Benzinga here and say, okay, now we know why you, we want you to, to use this platform and buy it because we can only show you so much. So if you're one of the active traders in here and you've been with us for a while and you see it, you got to have it on your end. You know, it's like when, when I keep promoting, you know, uh, you see me at NASDAQ and doing presentations at NASDAQ. And I'm like, listen, it's $15, you know, you know, don't buy it. Let's show you how to use it and then go buy it. And then you see the book map and you're like, don't buy it. Let's teach you how to do it. Now we're doing a lesson on this. And I'll tell you, it couldn't bring anybody better that could explain it better than you, James and Ryan. So uh, anyone have any last minute questions before we let them go? And we're going to close out. Uh, no, you know, Grant, you're more than welcome. William Ireland platform is informative. It's great. That's why I bought uh, the bought the book map, right? And that's why you got to also look at using the Benzinga with with it side by side with it. Um, excellent presentation. Thank you very much, Ryan from Debbie. Thank you. Bob says uh, the replay. Yes, we're going to send out the replay out to everyone. If you are signed in right now, you are. If you're watching on our social media channel, um, once again, you could just uh, if you are LinkedIn. And register for it. We'll send it out also, and you'll be able to access it on our YouTube um, uh, playlist. All right. But so, Fausto, uh, would you would you mind if I answered Alan's question before sure. we depart for the day here? Sure, anything. Okay, Alan asked, and I'll be very quick. Alan asked, you mentioned a couple of filters that were most helpful to start with. Could you mention those few tools again? So, Casey, you mentioned two things there in your question. You mentioned filters and tools, but I can do both for you. First of all, when it comes to tools, I absolutely encourage everybody start to become familiar with the newsfeed. News trumps almost everything. I don't, you could find the, the best setup in the world. If that company releases a piece of news that's material to the business, it's going to change that setup, that, that technical formation. So get familiar with at least reading news so that you can identify different keywords and patterns. So the newsfeed, I would also recommend the details tool just because of the wealth of information that you can get from one individual tool by utilizing the sub tabs. And then I would also start off with the movers scanner. Remember, this is this very easy to use scanner uh, that just requires a couple of clicks. If you find that the movers tool doesn't give you what you need, then I would try to use the scanner tool. It is a more full blown scanner. It might be a little bit more hard to input your variables because it's a little bit more technical but it's going to give you the results that you're looking for. As far as the filter that I mentioned, um, I mean, filters, this really is dependent on your trading style. But for me, especially for day trading, I could not do day trading without intraday relative volume. To me, volume tells the story on the trade. So that's what I want to identify. The entire scan is built around our vol 5M 30D. Yeah, and 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 to add to that, you know, Ryan, is that yeah, you, you some of you see us, we kind of show you some of the platforms like the Trade Station, the um, you know, uh, the Thinkorswim, all of them. A lot of them you can't filter that stuff out. And even on my platform, it's annoying because it'll show you stocks that will be up on that big percentage gainers, and then all of a sudden you're looking at, well, we only traded the fifty thousand. Doesn't fall within our parameters. You know, the students here at Cyber Trade University, you know how we talk about the three T's: tradable, trend, and trap. The 50% of the failure rate is the first T and that's the tradable. And if you can't filter that out, it, 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 it shows you junk that you don't want to see. And what happens, it, it will eliminate something that does have a very good volume, but we would have probably traded. So um, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a feature, which I still understand why some broker firms don't implement that in, but you know, that's why you want to go. That's why Ben Singer has it down. And, and, and you know, and I'll leave you with this Fausto, because what you're saying here is really, really important. One of the things that is different about us is that our entire development roadmap is built off of our clients. We created this software for our clients. So if you, if, if you start playing around with this, and when I say you, I mean the royal you, anyone here in this presentation, if you start playing around with this and you think, well, gosh, it's got a ton of great stuff, but it just needs this one little thing to help me absolutely let us know about that. You can submit feedback right from the platform, right with the feedback tool that's built into the menu. You can reach out to our team. We build new things based on what people are asking for. So if we don't have it, don't despair. Let us know. We're happy to try and incorporate it. There you go. 
So um, with that said, uh, Ryan, James, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to hopefully everybody gets a little demo of the platform and then subscribes to it. And then you could use it with your classes. And if you just want to just try it out a little bit, you could do that also. And uh, for me and the staff if at Cybertrain University and from Benzinga, guys, thank you so much for being here. We'll send you out the recording for it. Just make sure you register for it. And then, um, like I said, and we'll we'll teach you a little bit more as we're trading live in the market in the trading room. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Have a great one. You too.